Good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone. So we had a gap down that undercut yesterday's low. And the QQQs actually touched um, the 100 day on this gap down. That's interesting. So now the question is, are we going to rally and get rejected again on one of these uh, declining moving averages? Or are we nearing some type of a bottom? That's the question. I still see a lot of stocks kind of holding up and setting up. Good morning, Stock Daddy. Uh, GM, I don't see anything in GM, but Livongo, yeah, Livongo looks. Uh, Livongo looks. I mean, this thing looks insane. I mean, this thing breaks 147 area. It's gonna go to 200. It's an insane looking chart. Insane, insane, insane earnings. And the insane looking chart. Really good looking. Yeah, Celsius is uh, also great looking chart. I mean, truly, this is just, you know, this is exactly what you want to see. Higher lows, big growth, big momentum. It's surfing the 50 day. It's been holding up well during this correction. And, you know, you know this thing could go to 40. Oh, Livonga has stopped trading? Oh, no. Really? Has it? So now it's only TDOC. Yeah. Okay, so they uh, removed Livongo. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. Thanks. Okay. All right, because I was more uh, excited about the Livongo short than TDOC, but TDOC, yeah, absolutely. Well, that's good looking, but... Um... <laughs> Less is... Le fewer tickers, more focus? No, I want more tickers. I want more large cap stocks, not fewer.
All right, so what's the game plan? So my China stocks are gapping down with the markets, but they're still holding above the stop. Zoom and Peloton, I have big shorts in both of them. They're also gapping down a little bit. SC, I took a starter yesterday. I couldn't resist. It's gapping down, but it's holding up above my stop. So we'll see. Uh, GBTC is uh, well, it's just surfing the 10 day. I'm looking for an ad point on GBTC. I only have like 50 or 60,000 shares. I'm, I want to double that if we get a good, nice flag in next week or two weeks from now. Uh, all right. When did I dump NIO? You mean when I sold NIO? I sold NIO. Actually, I sold NIO before I got stopped out. I would have gotten stopped out on this day here uh, if I had followed my rules. But I sold it one of these days. I just thought it was getting. I, I thought it was going to have a big pullback with the markets pulling back. But it never did have a big pullback. I think I sold it on this day. Hey, here, maybe. I don't remember. SPWR. Uh, yeah, SPWR looks good. EMPH looks also good. There's some really good looking shorts. Yeah, yeah, could be. Yeah, TTD is looking beautiful. That's why I bought some yesterday. But again, like this is not great market conditions to buy these types of breakouts. Uh, you know, most of you would do better if if uh, if Nasdaq reclaims, uh, for example, reclaims the 10-day moving average. Uh, because right now we're still in sell the rally mode like every time the indices rally they get slammed down so it's very dangerous to buy but I'm kind of you know I have some profit padding from my shorts so but yeah Tesla is annoying Th that one stopped me out yesterday and today it gapped down actually gapped down below these uh, day before yesterday's low super it's Tesla has been super choppy <laughs> This thing doesn't want to go down. Twitter went to the where? 50 day. Was it all time highs? Wasn't all time highs. It was 52 week highs. Um, yeah, disappointing earnings. So let's see. Do we have any 
good earnings plays. Some of these COVID names have insanely good looking earnings names, but uh, oh sorry, earnings numbers. But again, you know, a lot of it's priced in already. Like MRNA had 828% revenue growth. <laughs> INOPK today, 87% revenue growth, 136% EPS growth. This apps has still insanely good earnings. Uh, but, you know, the chart needs to shape up. This S chain has insanely good earnings. But I think it's because they bought out the company. I, d I don't think this is organic earnings. Uh, QDEL has insane looking numbers. 726% EPS growth, 276% revenue growth. But again, a lot of this is already priced in. But if it can go sideways and build a base here for a while, it could be good. Yeah, UAA had shitty earnings. Or, well, not great. Not great numbers. Not shitty, but they weren't great. Amazon had insane insane numbers. Fiven um, looks good and it's gapping up. This thing is very hard trading stock though. This is more of a buy the pullback type of stock. Exactly like Zen. Zen is also, it rarely performs well of uh, uh, breakouts. All right. So let's not watching anything super closely. Uh, I may do Tesla opening range lows in case we have a nice sell because I, I think it's again still if Tesla lose starts if the Tesla bulls finally give up for now this thing could very easily fade back to the 100 day or even the 150 day. So there's there's still plenty of downside um, and I want to be there if it, that happens. Um, so that's the only thing I'm really watching out of the gate. Other than that, I'm just managing my positions. W short. When? When was W short? Guys, don't buy breakouts on a day like, you know, wait until Nasdaq reclaims the 10 day moving average at least. Don't follow me into these breakouts. Understand that I, I also have a bunch of short positions on. Okay, understand that about, I'm about, my short exposure is as big as my long exposure ish all right good luck guys
I did short some Tesla so far. <clears throat> Actually, a pretty decent position, but it it has a tight stop. So. I sold that starter SC from yesterday. Oh, Tesla. Nice. Yala, yeah. Vox, uh, this thing probably needs another week or so. What about WoW Twitter? It's just bouncing off the 50 day. Is WoW a good or bad thing? I don't know what WoW means. Is it good or bad? Rare? Bad? Why is it bad? It's bouncing off the 50 day. This is a good sign for it. It's very bullish. Well, it's not bullish if you, you know, bought it yesterday, obviously, but... You know, overall, I mean, if, if you're in from the breakout day, this is kind of bullish action. For now, for now. This is like 50 day. That's where a strong stock should find support. Or a leading stock. Like this Shopify looks like it has a lot of air uh, to the downside on the weekly chart. Like 30 or 25% downside, 30% downside. But on a daily chart, it looks, uh, doesn't look like that. But um, let's see. CDNA. Yeah, CDNA. Yeah, it's uh, up on earnings. Yeah, if you bought it though. The entry was opening range highs. This is the one uh, we talked about yesterday. Yep. This is the perfect scenario. It didn't gap up 10, 15, 20%. It kind of opened break even and it took out this 53 range. That was the entry. Very thin stock, but you know, looking good. Well, if you uh, follow the instructions on the screen, you'll figure it out. You will know. 
you will know where I set my stops. But people don't follow the instructions on the screen, so they ask me the same questions over and over again. No, the stop is yesterday's lows, entry day lows. No stops? Yes. <laughs> we don't do stops here. <laughs> wow, CDNA has pretty decent earnings numbers. Very explosive. Um, very fast growing stock. Tesla took out the lows again. <laughs> wow, Tesla. Nice, nice. Looks like I'm gonna get stopped out of my TTD any second. Zoom is trying to bounce. Uh, yeah, it could. So far, it got rejected on the 10 EMA. Let's see. Amazon is right on the 20 weekly or in the 100 daily. Sh uh. Damn, I wasn't paying attention. Amazon could have been a short opening range lows when it broke below this big range. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Uh. Okay, TTD. Goodbye. That's what happens when you buy breakouts in a <laughs> in a shopping market. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, you get short breakdowns. Yeah, Hertz finally got delisted or or is it just halted or did it get delisted? Yeah, China, some China names are strong. 
Yeah, one thing we've seen is the China names have been holding up really well. Many of the leading stocks are now breaking down hard, like Amazon, Shopify, Tesla. I don't like the fact that the lead, the biggest leaders are starting to break down. Like if they can't, like something like Amazon, it would be bad if it can't find support here on a hundred day. Like last time it found support exactly on a hundred day. So we'll see. Roku is starting to break lower. There is no mad catalyst for the market to go up. There was no catalyst for the market to go up in uh, mid-March either. And yet it went up. You're approaching things the wrong way. You should just, you know, follow price section. Yeah, but then the market kept going April, March, May, June. At what at what what point did the sellers come back? I truly want to know. I, I want to figure that macro stuff out. Yeah, Tesla is uh, nice. Nice, silly nice. Hey guys, can, can you can you uh, reach out to me next time the sellers are gone? And the market is ready to go up again. <clears throat> I want to catch the next flip point. I have no fucking idea what you guys are talking about, if I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I just know that if the leaders are go the biggest leaders are breaking down, that's not a good sign.
Exactly. When we get uh, down to sub uh, 200 viewers, that's when the sellers are gone. That's when the, when the market is ready to go up again. <laughs> that's a good indicator. <coughs> David, David, but you're just one person. You're not going to make a difference. Yeah, when I show my shorting PNL, that's when things are. Uh, that's that's when things are going to bottom. When did I show my PNL? Was it this day here? It was one of these days here. <laughs> kind of funny. Most of these losers are here because of you. <sighs> Most of you are losers because of me. Thank you. I take it as a compliment. <sighs> uh. Yeah, when the <coughs> VXX goes parabolic, that's... Um, but you know what, guys, do you see what I see? Like the indices are about to take out, okay, not the spies, I guess, never mind. The sp I didn't realize spies were still above yesterday's lows. But the Nasdaq 100 is below yesterday's lows, okay. All right, never mind. Because VXX is still way below uh, yesterday's uh, highs. So we'll see. Bat formation SPX? Really? <laughs> Wait, bat formation. What does a bat look like? Wait, I have to Google bat. Let's see here. Um, so what, how does a bat look like? Bat formation. So it has a... Oh, yeah, I see. I see it. Wait, here's the bat. Here's the body. Here's the body, right? This is the head. And these are the wings. You see this, guys? These are the wings. This is a bat formation. I, is, bat, is, is a bat formation bullish or bearish? Yeah, I don't know what it means either. I just know it's a bat formation. Look at this. This is a bat formation. And the, here are the eyes. Look at this. Here is one eye. Here is the second eye. This is a slightly retarded bat. That's why one of his eyes is a bit uh, larger. Uh, look at this. It, it looks exactly the same. Look at this. Look at this, guys. You can't make it. It, it looks exactly the same. Look at this, but I, I don't I don't know if it's bullish or bearish. That's um, but it. How the fuck did you figure out it's a bat formation? Like, you have a good eye. Literally, it is a bat formation. Unbelievable! It is actually a bat formation. It's baddish formation. A bad formation is baddish for the market, okay.
I kind of like my art. I'm going to keep this bat formation. It has to ha hold its uh, left wing. This is the left wing, not the right wing. Because it's, you know, from the bat's point of view. So it has to hold the... Uh, the, the left wing, well, actually, the left wing is shorter than the right wing. The left wing could could extend here. So if we follow the bat formation rules, this is where it should uh, the market should bounce, right? Which ha also happens to be like the 150-day moving average. Hmm, I kind of like this uh, bat formation stuff. Makes sense? Yeah, it does make sense. In a weird way, it does make sense. It's 2020, right? It's 2020, you know? You have to keep an open mind. A bat, bat formation is a very real thing. I also have to complete... Wait, what? Wait, why can't I draw a line here? What? What? Wait, what? Oh. I have to complete this wing here. Alright. That's it. It's a bat. Look at this guy. Bat setups, yeah. Put it in the YouTube. What do you mean sarcasm? There is no sarcasm here. <laughs> I'm 100% uh, serious. I'm gonna post it to um, YouTube. Well, not sorry, YouTube, Twitter. What's the winning percentage of the bat setup? 
I, I have no idea. I was just introduced to it. I, I don't even know how to trade the bat setup. Like, do you buy it if it takes out this this wing when the bat gets broken? Or like, do you short it when it breaks the lower end of the swing? I, I don't know. I have to wait and see what happens to analyze it. A broken bat is very bearish? Okay. Yeah, I, I guess so. A broken bat is never good. We lost 23 viewers with this bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? This is not bullshit. This is advanced technical analysis. It's because those 23 people, their brains burst by all this uh, information. It got too technical for them. They were here for the easy money. Just don't eat it. Yeah, you can trade the bat, but never eat the bat. Never eat the bat, guys. Life hack. You can look at them. You can play with them, but never eat them. Wait, bat formation from July to October 2019? Really? July to October. Let's see here. Wait, where is July? July to October. I don't see a bat formation here. Oh, that's 2018. Uh, 2019, let's see. Uh, July. Yeah, that's true, actually. So you had a wing here. Then you had the head. had another wing here hmm yeah you, you're right this one actually resulted to the upside No, it's not Batman. It's a, it's a bat. It's not Batman. It's an actual bat. But this this bat did kind of look a little bit fatter. Like this one looks a bit look at the body. It was much more fat. This one looks a little bit thinner. Do they have bats in Sweden? Yes. Yeah, guys, we are we are doing so, we have a lot of proprietary indicators on the stream for the stream only. Guys, do not leak this information. I, I'm I'm serious. I'm gonna sue you guys if you leak it. There's so much money to be made from this. 
And if the hedge funds catch catch on these things, th this indicator is gonna stop working. So you know, let's let's keep it here. Let's keep it. Let's keep it to ourselves. Amazon so far looks like it's bouncing off the 100 day. That's good. Hopefully it can put in a strong candle here. That would be very bullish. LTHM, yeah, LTHM looks uh, strong. What's LAC doing? LAC is still below the 50. Actually, if you look closely, there are there are bat formations everywhere. Yeah, Shopify also has a bat formation. It's kind of interesting. Bat formations everywhere you look. It's it's almost like your brain makes up things you want to be true. Xpev, another China EV stock, very strong. SPWR, wow, this one is just such a good looking chart. So bat means battery, which means the EV sector, which is a very hot sector. Makes sense. <laughs> AMD, uh, yeah. AMD looking, losing momentum. Oh, Shopify wants to take out the loser today. That's not good. Oh. Zoom looks weaker. Peloton, yeah. yeah, it's a tough market. There are things holding up. There are things holding up, but some of the main leaders look like they want to 
go lower. But you know, the stay still young. We you know a lot could happen. We could have a complete reversal. Oh, and also it's Friday. Yeah, we'll see what happens. I have no idea what's gonna happen. But I may short some TQQ through the lows of the day. If it starts, if if we go sideways the whole day and then start breaking the lows of the day, like in the last hour or so, I would short that. Anton Krail. Is he a good trader? Yeah, I heard of him. I've seen uh, he was he had a um, he had a show, a trading show. When he where he tried to teach uh, new traders, he ha he had like a hedge fund or something. I I've seen some of his YouTube videos. I don't really understand his approach. I don't know if it's working. It's probably not working that great since he's selling a bunch of trading courses, and you know you know someone doesn't have you know make a lot of money trading when they start selling trading courses. So I don't know. I think shorting TQQ is better than longing SQQ, yes, I do think so. I think it's better. Yeah, Anton Krail. His trading school got prosecuted for false performance claims, there you go. He said retail trading is possible, or sorry, impossible. Well, that just shows he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Yeah, guys, you know, be careful with all these people who trade, you know, sell these trading courses or, you know, s s you know, or think they know something, you know, 99% of them are total frauds, you know. If anyone is trying to sell you something, they better be able to back it up. They better have uh, audited uh, returns or something. If they can't back it up, you know, run the other way. How, I'm, how, how I am so under the radar? Uh, because I don't market myself. I literally don't market myself. I barely tweet. Like, I, I just, you know... I don't do any of that stuff. I'm too lazy. I don't give a shit. How I pronounce my name? Christian. Okay, now now I'm probably gonna get stopped out of Beely and uh, JD2. We'll see. Peloton, Zoom, Tesla. I have a lot of short exposure in those. I'm about 100% short in, in these three names. And then I have some smaller uh, long positions in JD, Beely and GBTC. 
Looks like I'm gonna get stopped out of Billy and JD any time, any second. Exactly, Lock Demons. Lock Demos. Lock Demos Dennis. That's exactly right. Because once you make it, unless you're a to total attention whore, once you make it, you don't really give a shit. It's these guys who need to, uh, you know, make money from selling stuff. Those are the ones who market themselves constantly. Those are the ones you constantly hear from on Twitter and social media. Most of them are, you know, fr not, not frauds, maybe, not outright frauds, but they're not where they want to be. Let's just say that. I'm generalizing, obviously. I, I do think they're all legit people uh, selling things. Like, I think uh, Investors Live is legit. I think, you know, Pradeep is very legit. Minervini, you know, look, the thing is... Like, I, I think his books are great, but yeah, there's something wrong. I don't get it. Like, he has this uh, expensive paid subscription. He has these super expensive uh, live events. And, you know, he this guy, and he's been trading profitably since, like, the early 90s. He should be worth a few hundred million, at least. And yet he's pumping these ultra thin micro cap stocks on Twitter and s marketing the shit out of his services and books. I don't get it. Well, I do get he's marketing his books because they're fucking good. They're really good. Like, I think Minervini books are really good. I think they're, uh, um, you know, if you want to trade the way I do, I think they're a must read. Uh, they're really good. There's a lot of good information there. It's pretty much the same thing like uh, William O'Neill's How to Make Money in Stocks. It's, it's, pretty, it's the same principles, but, you know, it's always good to reinforce good principles. But, you know, I, I don't get it. Why is he tweeting about these micro-cap stocks? Something is just sketchy. I don't know. I, I can't figure it out. It's like this Peter Brand guy. He claims he made like 30% per year for, what, 30 years? He should be worth a billion at least. Yet he has a trading service for like 100 bucks per month or something. Some things just don't make sense. What, what about Hertz? Is it open now? Oh, guys, <laughs> if, you, if you don't figure, well, if you can't figure out what's going on with Hertz, you know, you need to re read up on a reverse split. This is probably a reverse split, right? It's up 4,000%. 4, it's a reverse split. Yeah. Oh, he has a book too. Yeah, Tesla is a home run. But I'm still pissed I got stopped out yesterday. But I did short a lot of shares. I, I shorted 24,000 shares opening range lows. I covered up a couple of thousand. But I, I think this thing could easily go to 100 day. I've set that for two weeks now. <laughs> but we'll see.
there anything up? Only expert. Hmm, <laughs> Tupperware. What a beast, man. Wow. Who the hell would have thought we get a decent market correction and Tupperware becomes a leading stock? I'm sorry, but what the actual fuck? You can't even make... I mean, this is like 2020 in a nutshell. You can't make it up. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Trading... I mean, the stock market is really stupid, man. Once you figure it out, like, you would think it's, it's super advanced and everything, but the stock market is really stupid. It really is. The problem is you have to realize it's, it's stupid. You, you can't fight it. You can't think you're smarter than the market. That's where a lot of people fail. They think they're smarter than the market. You have to realize the stock market is really stupid. It has its moods. Thing, th most things don't make any sense most of the time, especially in the sh uh, shorter time frames. In the long run, most things make sense. Uh, but in the short and mid mid uh, term, most things don't make any sense. It's 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 just stupid, right? And you have to realize that you can't think you're smarter. You 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 kind of have to play along. That's that's the key to the stock market. You kind of have to play along its stupid games. Exactly. They are, markets are never wrong. Markets can be stupid, but they're never wrong. Would you say day trading is gambling at its core? Uh, not if you do it successfully. If you have an edge, guys, you can do anything. Like, you can even gamble with an edge. And it's technically not gambling. Anything you do where you don't have an edge is gambling. But as long as you have an edge... You can literally be at a casino and gamble and you'll, you'll come out winning in the end. If you have an edge and solid risk management. And then it won't be gambling. Oh, Billy. Oh, shit. I forgot to set a stop on it. Uh, I moved up my stop to today's lows. But I'm getting out of it now. Taking a small loss on it. All right. Now it's a t just um, JD left. No, I did get stopped out of JD too. Okay, fine. That's what happens when you buy, you know, breakouts in a bad market. And how do you know it's a bad market? Because it keeps selling. Well, when the rallies keep, um, when the rallies get sold. That's why. That's how you know. Like the Nasdaq, you know, every rally has been getting sold on the 65, on the 20, and 65 EMAs. UVXY. That's interesting. Spice are taking out the lows, but UVXY is not taking out the highs. Interesting. There's not that much fear here. Square. Tanking? Yeah, well, everything is tanking. You can pull up pretty much any leading group name. This is good. This is good, which means we are going to reset a lot of charts. That's uh, that's a good thing. Very good thing. Like, many of these leaders still have, like, 10 15% before they hit any major uh, support levels. We'll see. Dum, dum, dum.
Man, my big mistake today was not doing Amos. I, I, this thing had such a clean range break to the downside. Oh man, I should have been awake. Opening range lows on Amazon. Man, you could have done whatever size. This thing could... That's another like 7 to 14% downside, depending on where it wants to bounce. Hmm, could have been a big trade. Oh, TQQ. I guess um, not waiting for the late, late day fade was not the trade here. Yeah, Tesla. I have a big position. I still have 20, uh, 23,000 shares on of it. I think I shorted like 25 or so, 24. I don't remember. No, the one or the five minute on on Amazon. Opening range could be one minute, could be the five minute. I don't teach any short patterns. What pattern? Uh, just a simple breakdown. You can just clearly see it's breaking. Uh, Breaking some important areas. It's below the 50 day and couldn't, you know, got rejected of the 50 day and now it's breaking down. Look at the weekly chart. Look at how clean it is. Such a clean, clean fade of the 10 uh, weekly moving average. Uh, if you guys want to short here, you are out of your minds. Like this is really like every there's, there's there are no entry points left. They're all gone now. Everything is straight down. There's nothing here. It's you know. It's very dangerous to initiate any shorts now. I think. It's just with, as with longing stocks, you need very specific entry points. Very specific entry points. Can't chase stuff. But it's a good thing. Like uh, this is good, which means we. I hope we get a really nice flush, like a flush we didn't get the last time. Uh, the faster we get, you know, I would love to see if... I, I, I don't actually want the market to bounce here on the 100 day or the Nasdaq 100. I, I'd like it to bounce on the 150 or 200 day, but I'd like to see this, you know, fade. You know, that's another 10% downside to the 10, to that 200 day. It would be great if we could do it in like two, three days, four days. And then get a really big, you know, bounce and maybe a, a rally into year end. That would be nice. You want whatever I want? <laughs> Livongo. Yeah, all the leaders are breaking lower. Every single one. Every single one. SC. Damn, I should have done TQQ. Yeah. Wait, the elections are in the third, right? I always forget. I ask it like every day what date the elections are. <laughs> so we have like two more trading days. So we know the results what on on the fourth, right? Same day. We not know? Gonna be contested? How close the election is? Okay. Could take months? What? Really? So guys, so what, what do you, 
what do you suggest? Sell the rumor, buy the civil war? Or how does it work? Buy guns? Hey, David, can you buy me a gun? I want a gun. Are there any gun stocks? Yeah, there are uh, Sturm and Ruger. You have um, AOB. Wait, AOB? No, SWC. No, wait. Smith and Wesson. Where did that? Where did uh, did they switch the ticker again? SWBI. Yeah, Smith and Wesson. Thank you. Uh, what more are there? VSTO, but this is right, just a store, right? They they don't make any guns. They just sell. Uh, it's just a, it's just a store. Pose, yeah. Whoa, okay. OLN. Oh, they sell ammo. Yeah, you're gonna need that. What's the cover for short short positions? Uh, well, you know, always cover some into weakness, and you know, use some kind of trailing stop. But usually on the shorts, you got have to use some. I usually use like the either the ten day moving average or, or some of the intraday, uh, like the sixty minute, like the ten or twenty EMA on the sixty minute charts.
Oh, I'm nearing half a million on Tesla today. Holy shit. Nice, nice, nice. Now, if I just hadn't bought the uh, SC, JD, and Beely yesterday, it would have been even better. <laughs> and TTD. <laughs> kind of looks stupid in hindsight, but those things, they looked good, you know, they looked good. But, yeah. What can I say? If I was smarter, I would, you know, I would make much more money. Covered some Zoom and I'm gonna cover some Peloton here. Also covering some Tesla.
<laughs> you're making a living? A living under the br under a bridge? Nice. David sits in the back of the class playing with his gun and throwing paper planes at me. <laughs> yeah, sounds like David. No audio? It's because I wasn't talking <clears throat> for a while. My scans are weirdly, weirdly empty. It's kind of nice with these types of days. It's weirdly calming. Holy shit, Tesla. Now we're starting to see some um, speed up action in some of these names. That's nice. That's good. This is good, guys. This is good. Like, you know, we're still, as far as I'm concerned, we're still in a bull market. This is... Uh, you know, we're digesting this enormous move we've had from the March lows where the Nasdaq 100 went up 84% in like, what, four or five months. Um, and we'll see.
Uh, guys, chill out. This is, you know, this is a great time to sit back, study setups from the past. There's no, uh, no point in uh, trying to do any guesswork. We could bounce, we could not bounce. No one knows. <clears throat> you lost 20% of your net worth, so you're in 20% pullback. Well, you know, it's not ideal, but, you know, as a trader, you're going to go... Uh, you're probably gonna go through 20% pullbacks uh, every year, so it's not the end of the world. I have some tough psychological makeup. I'm just realistic. If you want to make 100 plus percent in a year, you're gonna have 20% drawdowns. It's just a fact. The key, the key is that the drawdowns come from uh, uh, after big uh, big runs? That's the key. I mean, think about it. If you double your account and then have a twenty percent drawdown, it's not the end of the world. That's the key. Not not. It's not always gonna be like that, but that's that's how you wanna play it. Exactly. There's been, um, you know, trailing stops. Most of my trailing stops hit like two weeks ago. But the problem, like the mistake I made is I tried to, you know, buy some of these uh, breakouts, especially the China names. Like JD, I tried twice. I tried SC twice. And I also tried Beely. I think I, th yeah, Beely I tried once. Um, and then it was some other one. Yeah, TTD and, you know, that, you know. Whatever. My shorts have paid for those mistakes, but um, yeah, whatever. Lesson learned. Your max monthly drawdown is less than 50. That's good. You were 80% long into today? Why? Dude, why? The market has been acting like crap for like three weeks straight. Like every time it tried to rally, it got sold off. Like guys, I'm gonna show you. I've, I, I, you know, I talked about it earlier. But an easy, easy market filter is just use the 10 and the 20 day. If the 10 day and tw uh, is above the 20 day and they both are training higher, that's a very good market, okay? If the 10 day gets below the 20 day, it, you should be a bit cautious. If the 10 day starts sloping down, you should be a bit more cautious. If the 10 day slopes down, the 20 day slopes down, and the 10 days below the 20 day, you, you should probably not, you know, buy any breakouts at all. You know, that's a very good, uh, like, a market filter. Very simple, very robust market filter. 
I wish I followed it. Uh, but yesterday I didn't follow it, so it is what it is. Like yesterday, uh, the 20-day started sloping lower. The 10-day had already been sloping lower. Um, and the 10-day actually crossed below the 20-day like several sessions ago. And yet I still try to buy some breakouts. Um, but I was also short uh, a couple of names, so it kind of evened out. But, you know, I shouldn't have done that. I would have saved myself probably half a million if I ha just had followed my own market filter. But, you know, it is what it is. The mental part of this game, the patience part is the hardest part. Like anyone can learn setups. Any anyone can learn the perfect entry points. But the really the hardest part is the patience. Like I, if I see a good setup, I just can't help myself sometimes. And that's okay. You have to realize, you know, you, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Exactly. Perfection doesn't exist. Do you think episode? No, I don't think episodic pivots can make you millions. I think episodic pivots can make you hundreds of millions over a lifetime. But you would know that if you had done the market study. I asked you guys to do a couple of times per week. All right, guys, I'm going to cut the stream. I just don't see anything else to do. I'm going to keep um, uh, covering into weakness, and we'll see how we close. Um, but I'm probably not going to do any big portfolio. Oh, man, I should have gone short TQQ, that 120 area. Oh, whatever. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Uh, and I'll see you on Monday, right? The market is open on Monday. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, right. Okay. Great. Take care, guys. Don't do anything stupid. Obey your stops. I don't want to wake up, you know, come to the stream on Monday and there's 150 people in here. <laughs> All right, guys. Take care.